Hey everybody, welcome to the Infinite Regression. Yes, we find ourselves back here. Uh, but don't worry, we've got video games. And, as a special delight, because I haven't been doing these too often lately, uh, because I have a day job and I had to put on a play and I had to grade a million papers from my honors students. Yeah, so... Uh, anyway, life got busy, but now I am on break, and I can actually get more of these passion project things done, uh, things that I do just for me, so, you know, look forward to more of this. Anyway, but we are going to play a game. I just decided, like, let's just play one that I know that I love, and it's one that I have been waiting to review. I am talking about Iron Fistical. Now... What is Iron Fistical? It is a fun little mamma jamma. Uh, there is a story to the game, um, and it is the story is not necessary. Um, and the fun thing about it is that the company, uh, Confused Pelican, who developed the game, uh, published by Curve Games in 2014, like they understand that this story of the game is ridiculous. Like, they get it. Uh, because this story is that you are two knights, uh, two, because you can play this in couch co-op, local type co-op. Uh, but yeah. Um, <laughs> you are two knights who are supposed to guard the royal turnip, but you both fall asleep, and this weird purple one-eyed bat alien comes and steals it along with all the other royal foods. And then you have to delve into the dungeon to defeat the baddies and restore the royal turnip. So, yeah. It's a whole thing. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I think the reason this story is so nonsensical and ridiculous is because they're indicating to you, like, there is no story you're just here to shoot bad guys and have fun. Because that's all video games used to be. Like, um, yes, every video game, like, you know, it's like Yar's Revenge, for example. Like, well, who is Yar and why is he taking revenge? And, like, if you wanted to, you could read the little pamphlet that comes with the game and learn the lore of the game or alternately you could just play it <laughs> you know because it's a space shooter and you just play it you know um anyway that's kind of how uh iron fistical approaches story which i'm fine with i'm absolutely fine with because this is very much old school arena shootery fun that's all it is. That's pretty well. That's not all it is, actually. <laughs> I lied. I'm a liar. Um, no, it's that plus and then some. Um, so here's what you do you take a classic arcade style arena shooter. So it could be uh, your berserks, could be your robotrons, could be your wizards of war. Um, yeah, could be one of those mamma jammas, right? So you've got a classic arcade style arena shooter in mind and you're like, oh, wow, there are a lot of really good games in that category that I really enjoy. Yes, you're not wrong. Uh, and then what if I said, okay, take that and add gauntlet, <laughs> you know, the video game gauntlet the classic arcade game that you also played on the NES way back when, and it's super much fun. And, you know, Red Warrior shot the food. Red Warrior needs food badly. Like, oh, you remember this. This touches your childhood. Like, this is, you know, something that you remember quite fondly, uh, is Gauntlet. But you also remember quite fondly the Berserk, the Wizard of War, the Robotron, haha. -ha. These two things put together, oh my god, 
you got chocolate on my peanut butter. Oh, you got peanut butter on my chocolate. Well, uh, what we done did is we created a delicious concoction. And that's what this game is. That's what it is. It's a delicious concoction. It's the chocolate in my peanut butter of video games. Because, so, you take a Robotron, twin stick shooter, who doesn't love that? It's already awesome. You add in Gauntlet, like you know, with the uh, treasure collection and uh, power-ups and stuff. Yeah, add that in. And it's like, oh, well, this is getting to be quite a delicious mixture. Um, I'm liking where this is going. And then you add in, um, you know, a sort of uh, rogue light ish <laughs> is how far I would describe it. Um, sort of randomization of the levels, not how the levels are generated because they are pre-made. It's just which order do you encounter them in and where are the enemies coming at you and which enemies are they uh, is kind of randomized a little bit, but like you get a feel for it through successive playthroughs of like the kinds of things you're going to be facing off against. So um, there is that element of surprise, but it's also like tempered so that it's not constantly like, well, I don't recognize any of this, <laughs> you know, because one of the problems with procedural generation is a lack of familiarity because some people some people build on familiarity with levels and understanding how to get through them as a means of negotiating their video game playing. And yes, I'm probably talking about older people, quite frankly, like myself. But um, yeah, who knows? Like uh, sometimes I, procedural generation, I don't necessarily love what it generates. Um, let's just be honest. Sometimes I'm like, holy cow, I can't believe this was procedurally generated. Looking at you, 20 XDX. But like, um, it's not always well done. And quite frankly, a randomization of well-designed levels is just as welcome. You know, if not more so. Uh, than a badly done procedural, certainly. Anyway, um, <laughs> so yeah, the the level designs will have a ring of familiarity, although the enemies that you have to kill off by the end of the stage do not change as much. There are a lot of zombies, sometimes skeletons, sometimes fire flowers, depending on what comes up. But Here's the fun kicker, is that there is an internal timer uh, to the game. You are meant to finish things quickly. You are not to just spend your time wandering around aimlessly, um, you know, trying to pick up every little last thing. Like, you kind of have to make quick work of the room and then get them moving on. Because, you know, what happens if you don't? Oh, you don't want to find out, honestly. So if you played a lot of old school arcade games, like your Bubble Bobble when the whale comes out, or your Berserk when Evil Otto, the smiley face that comes right at you, when these enemies come out as an indicator of you have spent too much time in this room, move on. Uh, those enemies are terrifying because some of them cannot be killed and they move much faster than you do. Uh, so, yeah, it's kind of terrifying. They have that in Iron Fisticle as an enticement to not spend forever in the room, which sometimes you forget about. And then they start showing up, and once they start showing up, 
they do not stop showing up. They just keep showing up more and more and more and more until you either exit the room or you're dead. But here's the problem. In order to exit the room, you have to kill all the enemies. In order to kill all the enemies, you need to be able to see them clearly. The more of these robots, which can shoot directly at you and do, and it becomes very difficult to dodge multiples of them at the same time, when they're all firing at you with crack shot accuracy, it uh, becomes quite difficult, <laughs> quite frankly. Um, it is one of the, it's, it, you know, evil auto I can get away from a lot of the time. Um, but the whale in uh, Bubble Bobble, I cannot always get away from. So it's, I would say, much more like the whale in Bubble Bobble than it is uh, like Evil Auto, but it's still that same sort of like you spent too long and now you must die um, kind of a thing. So be careful not to spend too long in a room. And also the fact that you are constantly changing through rooms and the exit that you take through a room matters because there is a map which you only see in between levels you see it at the very beginning of the game where you have to make a choice where to go and you see it in between levels where you have exited through either a side or a top or a bottom depending on where the exits appear um <laughs> so yeah it's kind of like it, it gets kind of crazy um, having to make those decisions, especially when you're trying to find a shop because you got a lot of coin and you don't want to lose it through death. You want to get a permanent power up, but you cannot find that shop and you're like, come on. Uh, <laughs> it's a feeling. It, it'll give you feelings. Um, but yeah, this game is super mucho fun. Uh, it is. I've had so much fun with it. And here's the thing, like, I'm really sad that I lost all of my character progress because I do not have my game save, my original game save, um, because this is a different computer than I originally started playing this game on. And so I don't have my original character with all the progress that he made and all of the permanent upgrades that he purchased. And it makes me sad, but it also makes me want to like hurry up and kill a lot of guys so that I can get that permanent upgrade back. So we shall see. I might be playing a lot more of this in the near future just to sort of beef up my character a little bit because I, I feel like personally attacked that like, hey, my guy was better than this, but like it's my own dumb fault for not backing up everything the way that I should have. I backed up most things, but most doesn't get you your old game save in Iron Fisticle, I hate to say. Anyway... Ladies and gentlemen, um, I need to put a final score on this. Uh, you know I love this game. Like, I've just waxed rhapsodic about it. I love it, love it, love it. Um, it is so much fun. Uh, it is easy to pick up and put down. You don't have to become super invested, but you can get super invested. And you can, like play it and have it be the only game you play all day and you just are like beefing up your character and being like yeah get these permanent upgrades and then as he gets beefed up you know the easier the levels start to get and the easier it is to get all of the loot and whatnot and then eventually you know your character is going to get built up too big and then you can bump it up a difficulty level like there you go how about that? It's got so much replayability. I could just go on and on about this game. I love it so very much. I think it's such a like brilliant idea because it's so easy with a um with an independent game to try to do too much. 
rather than just like, no, we're only doing this. You know, there there is that sort of appeal to be like, we want to be all things to all people with our game, you know, and you see a lot of independent developers that are really swinging for those fences and they're not going to get there in a lot of cases. Um, but then you see guys who are like, we are going to keep a scope that is like manageable and we are going to make a thing that is exactly what it needs to be. And that is why final score wise on this bad mamma jamma, I'm going a four out of a possible four red warriors shooting the food. Uh, because of course, got to make that reference one more time, but Man, I love Iron Fistical. I know that you can tell that. I know you know by now that I love this game. But the fact that you can get it so cheaply is just... I. It makes it so that I, I just want to yell at people and be like, no, this is quite possibly the greatest value in gaming right now. Like, you need to understand that. Like, this, it's so much fun, and it's so little money. Um... <laughs> And it really is. Like, wait for the Steam sale and see how cheap. I Because Iron Cryptical is not on sale right now, just Iron Fistical. Wait for the Steam Winter sale and see how cheap they are. And pick them both up. Uh, so fun. So very fun. And I cannot recommend it enough. I've just had hours and hours of fun with it. Um, if this seems like the sort of thing you might enjoy, totally go for it. Like, cannot recommend it enough. Anyway, people, I think that'll do it for this one. And I will see you in the next one. Okay, bye.